Wow, holy cow, that file got big. I ran VBA to loop through the files of my website and store information and access, and it worked. Now it'll be easier to correlate information on different pages, like images and links. This is just the backup file, which is a zip. The database is bigger. The zip was less than one megabyte before, and now it's over a hundred. Time to move some big tables to a back end. Hi, this is Crystal. Split the database! Before opening a file to develop, a quick way to back up is to right-click on the file in Windows Explorer and send it to a zip file. I already did that. Then I renamed the working file to include what's next. Well, what I thought was next, and is still on the to-do list, but now there's more since the file got so big. I need all those records, but not to be constantly getting backed up. That data isn't going to change, at least not for now. This application will help me manage my website. I'm working on a form to enter data for web pages so that Access can generate those pages for me and I can keep better track of what's on them. I did a compact and repair on this back end file. It currently has all the objects that the front end has, except it's a little smaller since I already compacted it. I noticed something interesting, so I'm going to compact and repair again while I record the screen. So I choose Compact and Repair. These are the files that Windows shows when the Compact and Repair first starts. Here's the intermediate file that the process is using. Do you notice anything unusual about it? It's an MDB. Interesting, considering that the database being compacted is an ACCDB. When it's done, the MDB disappears. You see the LACCDB file since the back end is open. That has information about different users. I'm the only one right now and keeps track of locked records and other stuff. When the database is closed, that file will disappear too. Well, when the database is closed properly. Now that we have a back end that we're going to link to, the front end will get underscore FE in its name. Right now, for me, it's 1021 AM, so I'll put a little note in about that. And the file lines table will get linked. Its related tables will be linked too. Now that it's backed up and renamed, open the front end database for development. I'm right-clicking to pick the latest version of Access since I have a dual installation. I keep 2007 just to be able to open all the MDBs. Size windows for faster switching. Here's part of the relationships diagram. These are the tables that will be linked. They're already in the back end, so they can be deleted from the front end. Here's the lines table. This has all my website content. This table is pretty big because it has a lot of records. There are over 100,000 lines. Wow, that's a lot of typing. Here's the line tags table. It has more than 2 million records. Hmm, I'll have to figure out why that has so many more records than the lines table. Another day. <laughs> yep, that's pretty big. And here are the attributes for tags. That's a big table too, almost 2 million records. I back up the front end a lot, so moving these tables to a back end will greatly reduce the size of the front end. I'm still developing, so the rest of the tables will stay in the front end since I'm still changing the data structure too. And they're not so big. But these tables? are definitely going to be linked. Since we're going to link to them, they can be deleted from the front end. 
Tag type is used to populate information about tags from lines, and that's already been done, so it goes. We'll also link to lines, L tag, L attribute, and line rel, so they'll get deleted from the front end too. Now that those big tables are gone, let's see how much smaller the front end is. Compact and repair, close it, and zip it to back it up. 3.9 megs. That's a more manageable size. Rename the front end for what's next. Still working on the web page form. And now tables need to get linked. To make that faster, copy the path to the back end database and open the front end. To help us remember what to do, on the right is an image of part of the relationships diagram. These are the tables to link to. How do we link? External data from the ribbon. In the Import and Link group, choose New Data Source, From Database, Access. When the dialog box to get the external data file opens, Paste the path in the file name box and click Browse. And pick the back end file, the one with underscore BE in the name, the big one. Normally I use lowercase underscore BE underscore in the file name to make the front end file stand out more, but this time I forgot. Once the file is identified, you can import or link. What do we want to do? Link to the data source by creating a linked table, and then OK! A dialog box pops up showing all the tables. It's a simple select list box. Click on a table to toggle its selection status, or press spacebar if you're using the keyboard. Choose the tables to link to. We're getting lines, L tag, L attribute, line rel, and tag type. OK. The navigation pane shows the tables we just linked to. They have an arrow in front of them. You can actually open them up just as you would a table that's actually in the database. That's one of the great beauties about access. Access is access. Here's the lines table the first of the big ones that moved to a back end. Now we have a big back end, about 450 megs, and a more reasonably sized front end, about 4 megs. There are LACCDB files open for both, because both of the files are open. The back end is open because the front end has the lines table open, and it's in the back end. Any objects that use the lines table can still use it, such as this query that counts lines in each web page. In summary, one reason to create a backend while you're still developing is when you have big tables. To create a backend, back up the database, make a copy of the database to be a backend, rename the working database to be the front end. Delete the tables from the front end that you'll link to. Link to the tables in the back end. Compact repair, after you save of course, and see your development file get smaller. And you'll be on the road for more splitting. Down the road, if and when the application is deployed to other users, the back end will then have all the tables that users need to share and each user will get their own copy of the front end. Do you want to know everything about Access? <laughs> That's not possible. Here's a great resource, everythingaccess.com. The tutorials page has lots of great articles and downloads. Here's one of my favorites. You can browse to a file and see all its properties. Wayne even made a function that Access developers can call in VBA to get values of specific file properties, such as dimensions for an image or length of a video. 
At everythingaccess.com, you'll also find services such as MDE or ACCDE conversion to something that you can work with and repairing a database that you can't open. There's also great products like VB Watchdog for error handling, VB Mappy tools, and more. EverythingAccess.com Are you building an access database application? Are you stumped? I can help you. We connect and work together whenever you need me. I look at what you're doing, help you build, show you the ropes, give you code, and empower you to do it yourself. Contact me. Thanks for joining me. Through sharing, we'll all get better.